Want to know how to transform your drawings from this to this? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you two easy techniques to help improve your blending. And I will be using the super cheap Crayola pencils in this video. So stay tuned. Hey people, it's Tammy if you're new here. So let's get straight into the video. I'm using Crayola pencils in this video just so that you know that it's not about how good or how expensive the pencils are. These techniques work on any pencils no matter how cheap they are. So here's the colour range for the Crayola pencils. I quickly put it in order just so that you have an idea. And the sketchbook I'll be using is this Art Gecko sketchbook. I'll leave a link to all my materials down in the description box. The first thing you want to do is to make sure your pencils are sharp. This might not seem that important, but it really is because the sharper the point, the easier it is to blend. Next, I'm just gonna do a quick swatch of all the colors so that you have an idea of how these pencils perform. And it's got a pretty good color range in this set of 20. I wouldn't try portraits with this set, but I think for a few still life objects, it definitely has a good enough color range. In the swatches, I also tried to show the natural gradient it goes through. So I went from a thicker opacity with a few more layers on the top left to less opacity, just so that you see how it performs. Okay, let's get on with the techniques. So the first technique is the layering technique. I'm gonna use these five colors to do a yellow to red blend. I'm simply just gonna do a very light layer of yellow at one end, red in the other, the middle orange colour and then the two other transitionary colours and I'm just going to build this up using light layers. So I've got an entire video on how to layer in depth so I'll link that up in the cards and down in the description box and you can watch that after this video but the technique here is just patience. You want to be able to get to a much more opaque point at the end but to create a smooth blend, you have to go layer by layer, just adding more pigment as you go. Going back and forth with the yellow into the orange area and the orange back into the yellow area, you will end up with a blend that looks like this. There's some benefits to doing this method. You can almost guarantee that you'll always have a good blend with this method, but it just takes a lot of time and a lot of patience to get to that point. And the second technique I'll show you is using solvents. So a solvent is basically a medium that does some of the blending for you. So in this video, I'll be showing you using the Zested Pencil Blend. And I got this on Amazon, I'll leave a link down below, but it's just meant to help you with the blend. So I'll just put a little bit in the lid and I'm going to do a light layer of color and I'll show you how this helps with the blend. You want to make sure you've got enough pigment down so that the solvent has enough of something to hold on to to ease the blend. But also I added a sheet of paper underneath because you see that this kind of seeps through. It didn't actually affect the paper underneath. This paper's quite thick, but just to be careful and to be on the safe side, I put a sheet of paper between this page and the next page. You can also see this ring around the rectangle now where the solvent kind of flows and this is no problem at all because it actually dries clear, but you just have to keep that in mind. Next, after leaving it to dry for a little bit, I put the next layer of pencil, and with this layer of pencil, I'm trying to add even more pigment and I'm trying to do unofficial blending. And then I'm going in with another layer of the solvent and you can see that this just blends it so well and it's so much quicker than only doing the layering process. This is what both blends look like, so tell me what you think down in the comments. Which blend do you think is better? I prefer the layering technique always. I just find that using a solvent makes it easier to blend cheaper pencils. And you can see that it leaves this almost oil stained area, but as I said, it dries clear, so that's no problem. Now I'll show you in practice. So I'm gonna do a bit of both using the layering technique and the solvent technique on this strawberry. So beginning with a sketch, I always do my sketch on this separate bit of paper. This is just random printer paper that I've cut to size. And I'm basically just trying to get a good outline of what I can see in the drawing. 
I started by marking points on the page as an unofficial way to measure how big I wanted this strawberry to be on the page and then I basically joined the lines together. I know some people struggle with the initial sketch and I would say spend time on this sketch because it's quite an important step but if you guys want a video on how to do proportions or how to sketch let me know down in the comments and I'll be happy to do that for you guys. Sketching on a separate piece of paper also helps because you don't have to worry about rubbing out too hard or going too dark with the sketch because you can basically do anything on this paper and then transfer what you do want to keep. So I'm going to be using this 5B sketching pencil to shade the back of the sketch and this is just an unofficial transfer technique. I'm ripping parts of the sketch so I can just stick it down using masking tape and then I'm literally just outlining the lines I want to keep. Another reason why I love this technique is because I end up with just one line instead of having the multiple sketch lines that I would have had in the sketching stage. And then I erase the sketch, so this sounds a bit counterproductive, but you want the sketch to be as light as possible so that the pencil doesn't show through the drawing. And so I just roughly erase the sketch using this basic eraser I have and then we're ready to start with the colouring. Starting at the top of the drawing, I like to work top to bottom, left to right, just so that I don't smudge the drawing. You can see that I'm also leaning on this tracing paper, again, so that I don't smudge the drawing, but also so that no oils from my hands ends up transferring onto the page. But for the leaves part of the drawing, this is probably one of the simplest parts of the drawing. I'm just using the colours you can see on the screen and just trying to mark out the darkest areas and then going in with the green and the yellow for form. This is only layer one, so you want to keep in mind that you don't want to go too hard with the pencils. You want to be quite light, but because I'll be using a solvent shortly, you also want to have enough pigment so it has enough to hold onto to then blend the colors together. And I'm just going in with the darkest areas and then adding some of the light green and a bit of yellow just to have an overall nice base. Next, I've got the solvent and the lid and I'm basically just applying it like paint. I'm just trying to hold as much as I can in the brush and then just brushing it over the area. Next for the strawberry bit, I had a rough sketch of where I thought the pips would go and I'm using that as a basic guide and I'm leaving the areas of high shine white. So this is only because I'm drawing on white paper if you're familiar with my work, I usually do it on tanned or other coloured paper. But one benefit to drawing on white paper is that you can literally leave the highlights white. And so I'm just drawing around a lot of the pips around that area and then leaving those spaces white and roughly shading the rest of the body of the strawberry. Thinking about drawings, you want to think about it in different layers. So this step is just to add the base colour and just to add some form to the drawing. Then we'll think about shadows and then we'll think about highlights. And for the shadows, you want to think about colours like purples or blues. And for the highlights, you want to think about the yellows or oranges, maybe a little bit of pink. And then using a white pen, you can capture the sharpest highlights. After I've got a basic idea of the form, I'm just going in with yellow and green for the pips. I'm darkening the entire strawberry area so I'm using a deeper red just all over the whole area and again I'm not trying to go too hard with the pencil but I know that I want the solvent to pick up enough pigment to make a nice blend. And I'm doing the exact same technique of just almost applying the solvent like paint and you can see that it forms a really nice blend. Remember to protect the sheet below with a different sheet. And now for the chocolate area, so the same kind of technique of keeping the whites white and then colouring the rest of it. I'm just using the dark brown to go over all of the dark areas and just basically a simple first layer without really thinking about the colours too much, just trying to map out the areas. And then I'm going with a lighter brown to help with the form and making it more realistic. 
I also go in with black for the darkest darkest tones and the black is really important here because most of this chocolate is brown so you really want to be able to diversify the tones you can see also going in with some of the lighter brown again as you can see the light source is coming from the left so the lightest parts of the chocolate are on the left side of the drawing and then we're blending into the black and the right side of the drawing for the highlight parts of the drawing you'll notice that it's not complete white and the easiest way to achieve this is by leaving it white at the start but then also using a gray to just slightly darken the area just to help make the make that area look more realistic then I go in with the solvent again. You want enough pigment down and then the solvent will just help with the blend. After leaving this to dry for a little bit, I'm actually gonna work my way from the chocolate upwards. So I'm just addressing the shape of the chocolate to make it closer to what I want it to be. The purpose of this layer is just to make the colors as pigmented as possible. You want the rich, rich brown for the chocolate. I'm also using the Crayola's white pen for some of the highlight that comes through the brown and I'm also using the Caran d'Ache white pen, that's actually my favourite white pen of all time and it's a lot better than Crayola's but to be fair Crayola held its own a little bit. But now you can see that the shine on the right part of the chocolate is looking a lot more realistic because of the blend into the brown. So it's never a complete white. And now I'm going in with the white pen for the sharpest highlights. So I'll be using two different white pens in this video. I'm using the Acrylograph white pen from Archer and Olive and the Sakura Jelly Roll. So all the supplies are linked down below. But with the three millimeter nib of the Acrylograph, I'm just going over the sharpest highlights, the bits that give off the most shine. That's the target there. And then I'm just using the thinner Sakura Jelly Roll just to dot around the areas of gradation from the shine to the brown chocolate. I really hope that makes sense. The dotting technique just helps with the level of detail. So this isn't the final layer. I will still go over some of the white to diffuse it a little bit with colour and pencils a little bit later on, but this is good enough for now. Going back into the strawberry itself, I'm then going in with the red and applying a much more pigmented layer. And applying this over the top of that solvent base just makes it apply on so, so, so smooth. And again, leaving the white areas white for now. I'm also using some markers to help out. So the Acrylograph is basically, it's an acrylic marker. So it can go on the top of colouring pencils really easily. I'm also using fine liners to help with the shadow on the pips. Because again, it helps go through a few layers of colouring pencils. And now on the right side of the drawing, with the way the shine is set up on that side of the drawing, you want to leave some areas more whitish slash pink and then you want to go over the shadowed areas with the red. Then I go in with even deeper reds for more of those shadows. And now using the Acrylograph pen, I'm going over some of the sharpest highlights on the left side of the drawing and you can see that it's really starting to come together. Using the Acrylograph pens, I'm going over some of the yellows and the greens with the pips and I really wish I had a better colour range here because I wasn't too happy with the actual tones of the colours I was seeing but the acrylic pens are the best things to use in this stage because of how well they layer. Then it's just a back and forth of going in with the purples for the shadows and then trying to get the pips looking back realistic. I also went over some of the sharpest white highlights that I left with a little bit of pink just to diffuse it a little bit. But part of what makes this look really realistic is how shiny the white is. So I'm trying to leave most of the white very shiny. At this point, it's just patience and just trying to add in as much detail as you can see on the reference. And now going in with the greens, again I'm using fine liner just for some of the sharpest edges and then I'm going in with the white pen for some of the brightest highlights 
and it's just a back and forth with the colouring pencils, some fine liners and the white pen. At this stage of detail, I'm adding in some lines using the white pen and this is where I said the, the white pen won't necessarily be the final layer because then you want to blend it because sometimes you don't add the white as the sharpest highlight. Sometimes it's just for a raised highlight and in that case you then want to go in with colouring pencils over the top just to do a little bit more blending. And yeah, at this point it's literally just back and forth, it's about the perseverance you give to the drawing. This drawing in total took me four and a half hours to finish and it's only on a small A5 sheet. And yeah, that's it for this drawing. I really hope this tutorial helped you. I hope you were able to pick up a few tips on how to improve your drawing. And please let me know what you think down in the comments. Please like the video. And I've got a heap of speed drawing videos and drawing tutorials on my channel. If you want to keep learning to improve your drawings, take a look at this playlist and I'll see you on my next video. Goodbye.